You didn't say yourself. I was expecting you to say me. Lions, they don't compare themselves with humans. <laughs> Hello, my fellow randomites. Your random encounter for today is something that everybody seems to have an opinion on. Women's football. More specifically, the reasons as to what makes its comparison with men's football unfair, why women's football is a challenge in itself, and how a fair comparison would look like. In this video, I'll be using the terms football and soccer interchangeably because <laughs> America. Before you proceed any further though, Make sure you like, share, subscribe and click the bell icon for weekly dose of exciting random content straight into your YouTube feed. Vive, come on, nund. <laughs> There are five key ways how the actual gameplay of women is different. 1. Men perform more passes per match with a higher accuracy, indicating higher volume of play and better technical quality. 2. Men perform longer passes and shoot from longer distances. 3. The typical performance quality of male teams is higher. There is better pass volume, heterogeneity, centrality and PR score. Four. Women's ball recovery time is shorter than men's, denoting either a better capability to recover the ball or a lower capability to retain it. Finally, women cover more distance than men at lower speeds, but at higher speeds, men perform better. While these are the differences very briefly, describing women's football as poor is partly misplaced and largely ignorant. Let us look at why this is the case. First, most studies conducted are wide open for interpretations. They operate under the assumption that the data are actually directly comparable and therefore they have not been scaled. Data scaling is a method used to standardize the range of features of data as the range of values may vary widely. For example, the higher accuracy of passes in men's matches may be due to higher technical level which in turn may be due to their national teams mainly having professional players. In contrast, several female national teams, example Italy, are composed of non-professional players or professional players for a short time. Second, there are various factors that affect the game no matter how minor. The producers of football booths do not manufacture their top models in sizes that fit the normal sized female foot. Thus, the top players have to use boots made for children, with 22% of the players affirming that they have experienced pain and discomfort. Minor differences like these snowball into bigger ones and affect the game in many different, sometimes unquantifiable ways. The differences in style of play between men's and women's soccer are also due to logical and strategical adaptations to the game itself. The best example of this is the goalkeeper. The female goalkeepers are smaller relative to the goal and have less lower leg strength. It is difficult for them to save penalties even though the shots will be relatively weaker. The average male goalkeeper would be able to stop a ball shot with some force to a position just under the crossbar without having to leave the ground, while his average female counterpart would have to jump in order to get enough of a hand behind the ball to deflect it. This does not mean female goalkeepers are inferior in their play, however. Many such goals are not the result of poor goalkeeping, but simply due to female goalkeepers having to defend a relatively much larger goal. For other players, less muscle mass also means that they use a larger percent of their total energy to move the ball and themselves around. This tends to lower the tempo of the game and the quality of the play, mainly towards the end. It also means that the ball will be moved relatively at shorter distances per pass. Each pass requires a higher percent of female's maximal force, compromising accuracy. Another reason concerns the tactical developments. Modern styles of play often involve a high pressing system. 
Pressing high requires extreme endurance because of the relatively larger pitch. Such tactics, if applied by women's teams, would impose a higher amount of physical conditioning. And training for this conditioning comes at the expense of technical skills practice. The circumstances are just different for both the sexes. The female football is constantly trying to adapt to rules and regulations that are suited for men and their physical attributes. Given equally challenging demands, male players would most likely have to adapt somewhat similarly to the way that the female players have done. For example, both the games to be same, it would require quite a number of regulation changes. The length of the field currently is 105 by 68.5 and that of the goal is 7.32 by 2.44 meters. But for a fairer comparison, for the females, it should ideally be 93 by 61 meters and the goal of 6.7 by 2.2 meters. The ball would also have to be a size 4, slightly heavier than a volleyball, and the duration of the game would, game would have to be 70 minutes. The current situation for women is equivalent to men playing in a 118 by 76 pitch with a goal of 8 by 2.6 meters and playing with the ball very similar in size and weight to the basketball. Plus the game would have to last 113 minutes plus extra time. While it is very difficult for these changes to be done, if not impossible, it is easier for the research to consider scaling the data for a more fairer comparison. It is also easier to increase the competence level of us as the spectators, appreciate the differences, and not comment in a way that disrespects the game. It is also their livelihood, after all. Thank you and take care.